good to you? I'll tell you, the Lord's, had it not been for the Lord's mercy, none of us would be able to make it. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you would, to the book of Proverbs, chapter 2. The book of Proverbs, chapter 2. The whole Bible is about the Lord Jesus Christ and God's love gift to us and our response and responsibility to God's call and to His mercy that He shed upon us. Amen. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1, He said, My son, if thou will receive my words... Will you receive His words? A lot of people will receive somebody else's word. But God is saying this. He said, My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee so that thou shalt incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the path of judgment, and preserveth the way of, the, of his saints." Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discernment, discretion shall preserve thee, and understanding shall keep thee. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would give me unction from the Holy Ghost, Lord, to be able to preach your word of God. Lord, help me to preach it in love and power. And God, in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, God will give all praise to you. Lord, you know what we need this hour. You know where we are. If there's any here lost, please draw them to saving faith. If there's any here, God, that's religious but lost, please save them. If there's any here in a backslidden condition, God, please restore unto them the joys of thy salvation. We give all praise to you, Lord. Have thy way. In Christ Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated. I want to preach to you on believing the words of God. Believing the words of God. Just about everybody that you'll run into, or at least for the majority of the part of people, will say that they believe the Bible is the very Word of God. And they will even say amen to 2 Timothy 3.16. I mean, most people in this area, most people that you'll run into, they'll say, yeah, I believe the Bible is the Word of God. And they believe 2 Timothy 3.16, that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for, uh, uh, for instruction in righteousness, for reproof. They believe that it's good for correction, instruction in they They say they believe all that. But it's a whole different matter when it comes to the issues in their own life. When it comes to down to trusting it for themselves, it's a different matter. And God realizing this, and, and He knows all things. He knows where I am. He knows where you are. He knows where we've been. He knows where we're headed. He tells us in chapter 1 of Proverbs, in verse 22, He said, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And he said, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and the fools hate knowledge. There's a lot of people, when it comes to receiving God's Word, and their own self being put under the light of the gospel, will try to make fun and scorn somebody else's faith, or try to belittle the church, and try to belittle uh, their responsibility, and to push it off onto somebody else, and put the limelight. Friend, you won't do that at the great white throne judgment. You'll stand before a holy God and there won't be no pushing. There won't be no cunning devices of twisting words. It's going to be how you stand between you and God. Not what you thought you stood or how you think you stand or what you were going to do someday. It's all going to meet to your relationship with God. Whether you're not 
if you're in the body of Christ or not. There's a lot of people say, I love the Lord. I just love God. But they have no, they don't talk to Him. They don't, they don't witness for Him. They don't labor for the, the Lord. They could care less if they're, they don't believe in hell. Not really, because if they did, they'd warn their family. Listen, there's a hell to shun, church. And if you've got the keys to salvation, how many's believed on the Lord Jesus Christ here today? You know that you've passed from death into life. Okay, how about your family, have they? Well, I don't know, preacher. Well, are you praying for them? Are you witnessing to Are you doing one thing to get them to Christ? Are you at least bowing before in your closet and praying that God, if you won't go, for Him to send somebody else. I know people who has children and they ain't got a clue whether they're saved or lost. Their attitude is the church's got a steeple high enough and there's one on every corner they can find their own way. I'm glad they didn't have to find their earthly food that way. I'm glad that the moms and dads at least cared enough to provide earthly food for them. But isn't it amazing? Those are just temporary things. Do we really believe the Word of God? Friend, the Bible says this, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And what that means is he's on his way to hell, or she's on her way to hell. That means they are in jeopardy of hell's flames. You say, well, that's your opinion. That's God's Word on it, friend. So do you really believe the Word of God? A lot of people say they believe God's Word. I believe the Bible until it shines into their life and it shines where they're standing. They'll say, well, that's not what it means. God said what He meant and He meant what He said. Amen. Jesus said, He that's not for me is against me and he that gathers not together. Are you gathering together? Are you gathering together? Are you laboring for the Lord? He that gathereth not together scattereth abroad. You're either, you're either an obstacle or you're a help for the cause of Christ. I'm either an obstacle or I'm a help for the cause of Christ. I've had people get angry with me because I preached a, a sobering, straight down the center of the plate truth that you're either saved or lost. There is no in-betweens. There's no grandchildren. God doesn't have nieces and nephews. He has sons and daughters. Amen. Amen. When Jesus stood before a very good man as far as the Bible goes and as far as men goes, in John chapter 3, his name was Nicodemus. He was a very religious man. He was full of good works. He paid his bills on time. He was an outstanding citizen in the community, but he was without Christ. And Jesus told that man, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And that man said, this is a hard saying. How can a man be born when he's old? And Jesus told him, that which is born to the flesh is flesh, and that which is born to the Spirit is spirit. He said, marvel not that I say unto thee that you must be born again. He said, the wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, cannot tell from whence it comes and whence it goes. So is everyone that's born to the Spirit. Let me tell you something. God compared His children like eagles. You know, you can go to North America and the eagle acts just like an eagle. You can go to South America, eagle acts just like an eagle. They, they, they eat the same things. They act the same way. They don't hang around in the valley with a bunch of buzzards. They, they yield to the wind, every one of them, and they set their homes way up in the clouds. They're an eagle. They have the spirit of the eagle. They have the characteristics of an eagle. An eagle is the same in Alaska as it is in Tennessee. Amen. All eagles act the same. You know, I, I left here and went on this several years ago, probably 15 years ago. My wife and I went to on a vacation. We went down to Myrtle Beach. And you know what I found out? Christians in Myrtle Beach are just like Christians in Knoxville. I mean, if you're really saved, you can find folks that's the same. The first thing I did when I hit town wasn't to be able to find me. We did find a place to, to sleep. But the second thing I found wasn't a place to eat. It was a place to worship. And you say, well, you're on vacation. Not from God, I wasn't. I wanted to find me somebody to, to assemble with, and I did. It didn't take me but just a little while, and I was able, not only did I 
find it in the phone book, I went and found out where its location was because I planned on being there when it come time for worship. Amen. I'm not saying I'm anything. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. But I am a Christian. I am born again. I have a hunger. I hunger and thirst for righteousness. I don't come to church because they pay me. I never have. I don't come to church because my wife tells me I should come to church. I was coming to church before I ever met her. Amen. I don't come to church because mama said I ought to go. I go to church because of a choice that I made because God saved my soul and He put a hunger down inside my spirit and inside my life that, that I have a desire to be with God's people. I go to this church because this is where He led me to. This is where He, he got me involved at. There's a lot of churches I pass on the way to this church. But they're not the place I ought to be. I ought to be where God has placed me. Amen. And that's why I'm here today. Do you know that God knew everybody that was going to be here and He knew the ones that wasn't going to be here? I had no clue who was going to be here. But listen, do you believe that the, the Word of God is the very Word of God. Do you, do you actually believe it? Listen to what the Lord said. He said, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And scorners delight in scorners. Scorning and fools hate knowledge. He said, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, and I will pour out my Spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. God said, All you have to do is be real. All you have to do is in simple childlike faith is first of all ask God to forgive you and come to Him just as you are in childlike faith. And God will receive you. God will forgive you. God will restore you. God will save you. He will keep you. He will build you up in the most holy faith. But you got to come. You can't just say, I was thinking about coming. You say, I know all about church. I've been to church before. You can't tell me. I talked to a lady. I asked her if she read the Bible. She said, I've read it before. I, I know all about it. I've been reading it for 30 years and I hadn't learned all about it. I find something new for me every day. Amen. God's words are, are, are forever new and they're fresh. Amen. Listen, uh, when it comes down time to applying the Word of God, people say, I believe the Word of God. But do you know the Word of God said, Forsake not the assembling of yourself together as the matter of some is. But uh, uh, so much the more as you see the day approaching. The day of what? The day of Christ is coming, friend. Listen, God's plan is going to go just like He said it was. There isn't nothing changed. Listen, you could wipe this church out and God's plan is still going to go just like He said it was. You can wipe out half the preachers in Tennessee or as far as that goes in the world and God can raise up out of rocks preachers to go preach His Word. That's right. Amen? And God's plan is going to happen just like He said it was. People think that, that if, if, some, if I, oh, if I don't do my part, God will get somebody to do your part. Amen. If I don't do my part, God will raise up somebody to do my part. But I don't want no rock doing my part. I don't want no trees clapping its hands for me. I want to clap my hands unto the Lord. I don't want some other uh, uh, thing to do my praising. I don't want a rock to do my praising. I want to praise the Lord while I have my breath. I want to lift up my voice and glorify His holy name for I am thankful for what He's done and doing in my life. When it comes down time to trusting it for our own self, we say, well, that's just your opinion of it. Bible says that we ought to confess our Well, that's your opinion of it. The Bible says that He said that we ought to live holy. Well, that's your opinion of it. People say that's your opinion of it. Just because you say that don't get you out from under it. I meet people all the time and they think they're smarter than God. They say, they say, oh, I don't need to go to church. I don't have to go to church to be saved. I am saved and therefore I have a hunger for it. Amen. When I miss it, I've missed church before, and when I do miss church, I I I feel empty inside. Amen. I, I miss the fellowship. I miss the food that the nourishment that I was going to get. I miss being in my place. But I'm glad I'm not going to miss the rapture. I'm glad that the Bible's listen, God's plan is going to go just like that He said it would go. Listen to this, what Jesus said in John 5 and 43. In John chapter number 5 and verse 43, He says these words to us. He actually said it to the children of Israel. Read verse 
42, he said, But I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. And if another cometh in, shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Isn't it amazing how we won't receive God's Word? Won't receive God's Son? He said, How long? He said, How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? He said, Doth not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. These Jews are trusting in the law that, that they were righteous. He said, For had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me, Christ speaking. He said, If ye believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? If you don't believe the words of God from cover to cover, how can you believe any of it? Right. Amen. The same one that said that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him also said at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of ourselves to God. Amen. The same one said that. Listen, there's, there's a lot of people that won't receive it. In Psalms 119 and verse 105, he tells us what the Word of God will do to us. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Do you know God's Word will show you some things in your, going on in your life? God's Word will show you some spiritual things. It will open up the spirit world to you. The Word of God will help you to be able to see Satan's tactics that he uses against you. God's Word will be able to show you how Satan is working a, a, a con plan on you. God's Word will reveal motives, yours and others. God's Word will shine lights in places that the natural man can't see or understand. God's Word giveth understanding to the simple. God's Word will teach you some things that you can't get from anywhere else. Amen. Listen, will you receive His Word? I mean, will you receive it for your life? Most people want to step outside the realm of faith and say... Oh, yeah, I believe that. Oh, yeah, everybody knows that. But they won't put themselves under it. And they won't claim the promises for themselves. And they won't lay hold to the truth that God has given unto us eternal life. And His life is, this life is in His Son. God's plan is going to go on. Just like His Word said it, whether you believe it or whether you don't, whether you trust your life or, or whether you don't, if you will, God's Word can meet every need that you have. If you'll but accept Him and accept His Word, there's not a problem you can face that God's Word don't have an answer to and a solution to. God's Word has a solution. Do you know the Bible says when a man's ways please God that He'll make even His enemies to be at peace with Him? Amen. God said He could prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. <laughs> and it would be a peaceful table. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, the Lord is the way. He's the only way that you can make it unto heaven. Jesus said this in John 14 and 6. He said, I am the way. Will you accept God's word that Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father? In John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's not by being a Baptist. It's not by, it's not by being a church member of some uh, denominational church or undenominational church. It's it's not by, uh, by holding out and holding on. It's he that hath the Son have life, and he that hath not the Son of God have not life. Do you know what happens when you have the Son of God? You have life. You know what happens when a baby is born, stillborn? When a baby is stillborn, it looks like a baby. It comes out the, the natural way that a baby comes out, but it don't have breath, which means it don't have life, and it don't have an appetite. It looks like a baby. Eventually it will stink because it has no life and it will rot. And I'm not trying to be gross or gruesome with you. I want you to see something. A lot of people went through the motions of salvation that very way. They went through the motions of it, but nothing got produced. They went through the motions of it, but it didn't produce a new man. It, there was no change there. 
The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. It means there's going to be some life in there and an appetite for God. Not an appetite for the beer or the liquor or the pills or, or the world. An appetite for God. An appetite that seeks after God, that seeks His face. That hungers and thirsts for righteousness. They don't come to a lost person. Well, I, you couldn't tie me to a Bible before I got saved. I didn't, have, I didn't want to read no books, especially the Bible. Amen. You say, well, everyone's not like you was. That's right, but I'll tell you what. I don't see too many sinners reading the Word of God. I don't see too many lost people toting the Bible around for good reading. The fact of it is, it's a spiritual book. And the only ones that has appetite for it are those under conviction or those that's been quickened. Amen. And you'll find out. That book, that book will get you in, in touch with its author. The Bible said all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Listen, will you receive the Word of God? Will you, will you trust God? Proverbs 3 and 5 tells us to trust the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy path. Will you trust God? Or are you going? The Bible said there is a way that seems right to a man and then there are ever the ways of death. Oh, I just think I'll do the best I can, keep the golden rule, be good to people, and just pay my bills and you know, be a good old boy and I'll be okay. You'll go to hell. You'll go to hell. You'll open your eyes in hell. You can do that. There's a lot of good old boys in hell. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Will you receive the Word of God? You know, until you get lost, you'll never get saved. We try to raise Christians. And I understand you ought to bring up a child in the way he should go when he's old, he'll not depart. But even then, he has to believe for himself. He has to come to a position when the revelation comes into their life that I am lost. Caleb was raised in a home with a preacher. Amen. He'd been to drug the church every time the doors opened, revival, singings, uh, evangelistic meetings. I mean, just like my son was, he was, he was dragged to church everywhere he went. But there come a day in his life, and I'm not trying to pick on you, brother, but there come a day in his life, and it wasn't at church, just so happens. Where was it, brother? I was sitting on the front porch stoop. Sitting on, at his home? Yeah. At his house. After church, sitting on the front porch stoop. And the Holy Ghost of God was working in his life. And what did he give you appetite for after you called on his name? Him. Amen. Gave an appetite for the Lord. He began to have desire to fellowship with God and a desire to know about God and a hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God. And it's, he's not just a, a one in a million. Everyone that's born has that hunger. Anything that's alive has an appetite. Anything that's alive is, is going to eat on something. Now you say, well, well I eat every day. Yeah, I'm, I know the natural man, but spiritually, how are you? Amen. What do you feed on your spirit? Oh, my spirit don't eat anything. Dead things don't eat anything. And the fact of it is, until you're quick and you're dead toward God. The Bible says that we are dead toward God. Listen, Jesus said, I am. He said, I am the way. He's the only way. I am the truth. He's the only truth. I am the life. In Him is life. And the life is the light of man. Amen. He says in Revelations chapter 1 and verse number 8, Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord which is and was and which is to come, the Almighty. That tells of His deity. Who Jesus Christ is, His deity Will you receive Him as such? Will you receive His deity? Will you believe on His name? In John chapter 10 and verse number 9, Jesus said this, He said, I am the door. By me, if any man entereth in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. Do you see, receive the Word of God for yourself? Is He your Savior? Is He your door? Have you been through Him? Have you... Had fellowship? Have you called upon the name of the Lord? You say, well, I know to. I'm not saying, do you know to? Has there a point where you pass from
from death and the life that you called on the Lord for yourself and not another. Now you know whether you have or not. You'd be surprised how many come to the, to the thr threshold of salvation, but they never crossed over. And they'll scoff at others who have them. Scoff. Ah, look at that. They act like, I always got something to say about it. Try to stay back. I'm different than everybody else. You may be different than you think. Amen. You may be a lot different than you think. In John 19 and 30, when Jesus hung on Calvary's cross, He said, it's finished. Amen. What's finished? He didn't say, I'm finished. When He hung there, He said, it is finished. The work that God gave Him to do was finished. It was complete. Salvation had been paid for. Amen. Have you entered into that payment? Have you received that payment? Have you believed that payment? You say, what was it? It's the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ shed His blood. He shed it for you and I. That we could have life and have it more abundantly. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 14, He said, I know that whatsoever God doeth it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. God doeth it that man should fear before Him. Jesus said, I am the singular. I am the way. That ought to let you know. If you do. He said, if a man comes any other way into the sheepfold, he comes as a thief and a liar. He said, I am the door. He didn't say, I'm one of the doors. He said, I am the door into the sheepfold. It's Jesus Christ. In John 10 and 17, our Lord tells us this. He said, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, I, I, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Jesus Christ, nobody took His life. He gave it freely. Who did He give it for, preacher? He gave it for you. He gave it for me. He took my place on the cross as a sinner. And He bore my shame and He bore my sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. He tells us in Matthew 28 and 18. In Matthew 28 and 18, He said this, He said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. God has given all power to the Son. He had power to lay His life down. He had power to take it up again. All power is given to Him. And when you receive Him, He gives us power. The Bible said in John 1 and 12, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them which believe on His name. He gives you power. He said in 2 Timothy 1 and 7 that God didn't give us a spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. God has given us some power but you've got to use what you got. I have about $80 in my pocket right now and I can go out of here and I'm kind of hungry and if I... I can go by every restaurant there is up and down this highway. I can, I can walk into them and look them, but until I take the money out of my pocket and lay it down on the table and order, I'm going to be hungry. Amen. Amen. That's good. God has gave you power. Power to believe on His name. Power to receive His forgiveness. Power to call on Him while He's near. God's gave you power, but you've got to use it. He tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, in 2 Peter chapter 1, in verse number 3, He said, According as His divine power hath given, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. The Bible said, Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John 4 and 4, God has given us a power if you'll but receive His Son. 
He said, as many as receive Him, to them gave He power. Amen. Pertain to all life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. God has called us to glory and virtue. In John 16 and 33, Jesus said this. He said, He said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Because He's overcome, I can face things because He's my strength. He's my rock. He's my help. He's my fortress. He's my Savior. He's my God. People think that Something happens in their life. Something happens at church. Something happens in the home. Changes things. Things are not the same, preacher. Don't matter how they are. God never changes. Amen. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I've had some people that's quit me in the walk of faith. I've had brothers and sisters that's yoked up side by side that's laid down the cross and walked off. I've had some that lost the burden and left the faith. I have some that's just left the fight. I have some, praise God, that are still standing and still praying and still pressing on. Hallelujah for, the, for those. Amen. Jesus' plan is going to happen just like He said. If I don't go, it's going to happen. If I throw my Bible down today and walk off, God's plan is going to happen just like He says it. Right. I ain't planning to do that unless I lose my mind some way and lose my thinking. Because I love the Lord with all my heart. And so, but if something were to happen and I were to do that, His plan's still going to happen just like He said it was. Listen, have your faith and confidence in God because He's going to bring it to pass. Listen to what He said. Jesus said, He said, if I go away... I will come again and receive you into myself. It don't matter who goes with you. God's plan is going to happen just like He said it was. It's still going on according to His plan. You can either be part of it or you can be a statistic of it. But it's going to happen. You can be a casualty or you can be a crown in His crown. A star in His crown. You can be part of the rejoicing or you can be caught part of the calamity. But His plan is still going to happen just like He said it was. He tells us in Acts 1.11 these words. In the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse, uh, verse 11. In Acts 1.11... Verse 10, And while they looked steadfast toward heaven as He went up. See, Jesus didn't leave in secrecy. There was a crowd watched Him. Some unbelievers. Some people that just didn't believe. They couldn't explain what they seen. Him just ascend right up into the clouds. And when they... <laughs> And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? He said, This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. A lot of scoffers right there, they scoff at that. Yeah. They say, Ah, they're looking for the Lord to come floating out of the sky. Oh, He's going to come like lightning, believe me. It ain't floating. As lightning strikes from one end to the heaven to the other, He'll come. And you know what? All your big speeches and all the hard speeches that people make, buddy, they'll be eating those words. That You know what they're going to do? They're going to call on God. They, oh, yeah. They call on the Lord. This is what God said. He said, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity and scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Fools hate knowledge. They hate it. I want to be right. I want to do it my way because there is a way that seemeth right. I'm going to do it my way. Elvis Presley, I think, wrote a song. I did it my way. Or he sang one of them. I don't know if he wrote it or not. God said this. He said, I've stretched out my hand and you refused. No man regarded. 
But ye have said it not, all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. God said, I've called to you. I've showed you. I've reached out for you. I've compelled you. And you said, no, no, no. But ye have said it not, all my counsel, counsel, and would none of my reproof. Here's what God said. He said, I'll laugh at your calamity. He said, I, will, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. This is in Proverbs 1, 27. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge and they did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel, and despised all my reproof. There, therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. God said, you like your way that's so good? I'm going to give it to you. Amen. See how you fixed it up for yourself. He said, they'll be filled with their own devices, and for the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and find quiet from fear of evil. God said, listen. He said, I am going away. And he did. And he said, and if I go away, I will come again. And he is. The Bible tells us that he is coming back. Just like he said in Hebrews 10 and 37. He said it this way. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 37. He tells us this way. He said... For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. You see, the Bible says in Second Peter that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. God's not bound by time like we are. Some of you are coming to the twilight years of your time. Some of you are in the mid your 30s and 40s and you feel like you got all kinds of time. Some are in their teens and their preteens, and they feel like the whole world is before me. It'll go by to blink, man. You'll say, where did it go? You'll say, where did it go? Some of you are now in your 30s and still in the same place you was at when you was 16. Amen. Some are in your 40s in the same place you was at in your 20s. And you're wondering... Where's it going? Don't end up in your 60s and be in the same place you was because you won't like it then. Body falls apart. Can't do the things you normally would and your options are limited. Don't leave this world without Him. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews 13 and 5 this, for those that will trust God, for those that will put their hope and trust in Him, He says this, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For He has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I, sh I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Listen, he's coming back just like he said he would. And because he's coming, we need to make preparation for that day. He said, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Listen, he said, wherefore seeing we also are compassed in Hebrews 12 and 1 about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross you say what joy knowing that he was going to give you mercy the joy of knowing he was pleasing the father the joy of one man sacrifice many being made righteous the joy of redeeming us and Obeying the, the will of the Father. Endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, unless you be wearied and faint in your minds. Living for the Lord isn't a bowl of roses, it ain't a bowl of uh, uh, strawberries and pie. It's hard. Sometimes people, people judge you. They... They mock you. They try to ridicule you because you have faith in God. That's okay. They can boast themselves in their strength and their wealth and boast themselves in their ways. But when it comes down time to it, they all fit in a pine box. 
And once the ghost is give up, they go to their own place. Where is your place going to be? Is it going to be in the pit? Is it going to be in the flames of hell? Or is it going to be in heaven? The Bible said to be absent from the body for a Christian is to be present with the Lord. Amen? He said for a child of God, it is to be absent from the body, is to be present. Paul said he had a desire to be with Him, which is far greater. He had a desire. He said, what I choose, I would not. I believe after Paul saw the things that was unlawful for him to say, I believe he had a desire for heaven. Amen. More than he ever had. The Bible said that Paul had come to revelations and, and God wouldn't give him permission to share all the things that he's seen. But I want to say this, everything is going to God's plan. If something bad happened in your life, lose a job, lose a loved one, family member stumbled. Listen, things are going just like God said it would. God's plan is still on time. God's plan is still on course. God's plan is going to happen just like He said. Well, what are we to do, preacher? You are to be a part of it. You are to help take as many with you as you can. You ought to shine where you are. You ought to at least love them enough to tell them that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. You ought to at least love them enough to tell them, John 3, 16, that God so loved them that He gave His only begotten Son so they wouldn't have to perish. A jailer asked Paul and Silas, said, Sirs, what must I do? He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Yep. You ought to tell them, Call on Jesus. Ask Him to come into your heart and save you. He's rich unto all them that will come unto God by Him. All you got to do is call. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads just for a few moments. I'm out of soap. I'm going to quit washing. I hope you do believe the Word of God. I want to say this. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. Whether you believe it or not, it's going to happen just like the Father said it was. Whether you believe it or not, there's a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. Whether you believe it or not, God has a plan. He wants you included in it. And you're the only one that, that can exclude you. A preacher can't exclude you. Your, your family can't exclude you. No organization can exclude you. Only you can judge yourself unworthy of the grace of God and reject Him. If you're here today and the Spirit of God has showed you your lost condition, why don't you just simply take an a, a act of faith and just step out and come down. I'll meet you at the altar, but most importantly, Jesus Christ will meet you here. We'll pray and you can go to the throne of God boldly. Anybody, anywhere, would you come?